Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be diving straight into the Bitcoin charts here as we have got we have got a lot of action going on on the lower term time frames. I've just taken a short position on Bitcoin. I'll be explaining why I have taken that short position and really what I'm looking for next over the next few hours to the rest of the week ahead. Obviously, start of the week here on Monday, I'll be giving you all the most important levels that we're looking at for up to Friday. So I hope that you thoroughly enjoy this video. And uh, yeah, I'll be explaining why I took that short and really, yeah, exactly what I'm looking for next. I'm going to run this video in three parts, picking up right where I left off my last video, where we were obviously here. Then I'm going to be moving on to the local downtrends and then exactly what's happening now and what I'm looking for next. So that's how we're going to run the show, starting off with point number one, where we left off the last video. And obviously we were here on the last video that I made. OK, and while we were trading in this section, I was obviously saying I'm very much expecting a new high to be made. I was expecting a new high to be made on the Bitcoin chart. And what did we do over the coming hours? We made a new high. This was obviously one scenario that we were looking at in this public video on, on YouTube. Um, one of the scenarios was obviously take that high and come back down below it. And if that scenario was the case, we obviously were looking for a bearish retracement. The other alternative was simply break the high on high volume. We never got that. This vol this break above the high did not occur on high volume. And then we instantly started to form our local downtrend here. And that local downtrend, well, you, you'd have seen it had a lot of bearish divergences. So you had a lot of bearish divergences up here and you changed the market structure. High, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high. And at this point, you've change the market structure and you've clearly formed a failed auction above that high okay the other scenario obviously was a clear breakout but because the volume was insignificant on the break you know you've just instantly seen the weakness then the bearish divergences then the cc rejection cc rejection cc rejection cc rejection everything just rejecting off the cc fibonacci in your local downtrend with really big bearish divergences has really, you know, aided this move to the downside. And this was definitely one of the scenarios that I made you fully aware of that could be the case. Of course, we wanted to check the order flow. And really, this was what I was posting in my group after. I'm still, this was obviously before we had took the high, still looking for the swing flow pattern, all the failed auction, the failed auctions where we spend a little bit above and then back below, which is what we got. We got the failed auction, the FA. Um, and then obviously since that, OK, we just continued to get our downtrends, downtrending, downtrending. This channel had been perfect. Every time we hit the channel highs, we were just given really nice short positions. OK, and well, really simply that that channel traded for the next few days, giving us obviously up to last night where we finally saw the ES open with weakness. So the ES saw its gap to the downside. And at the time, DXY was pushing up. So then we're led to believe if ES is weak and the DX is pushing up, what does that mean? It means Bitcoin to go lower where we're following our correlations. So the ES weakness, stock market weakness equals Bitcoin weakness. DXY straight generally equals Bitcoin weakness. OK, so the ES is a correlated asset. If ES moves down, Bitcoin moves down. DXY is the inverse correlation. So if that moves up, Bitcoin moves down. Right. Hope that makes sense. So upon seeing that information last night with these gaps, with these moves down, we can obviously have a high probability of Bitcoin moving down too, especially rejecting off the top of that channel. I know loads and loads of people were saying bull flag, bull flag, bull flag. And of course, <laughs> it wasn't a bull flag and it was just a simple trading channel. You short the top of these channels, you don't look for the breakouts of them. And in the end, yeah, it did break down heavily to the downside. And actually the level that we got the exact bounce of them. Actually, let me just explain one more reason why we put in the high where we did. OK, so this could be quite interesting for you. So if we just zoom out here a bit, a bit uh, you can actually see where we rejected from the middle of our channel. So this is our channel from overall low to overall high. And this is something that we were talking about last night in the Champions live stream. OK, this is clearly our level of resistance. So from the last public video, I hope this is all coherent for you and it's making sense. Let me slow it down, possibly. From the last public video, obviously I was made, made you were aware that local bottom is in. Overall, I was expecting lower, right? <laughs> but our local bottom was in where we obviously took that long. We brought it up to 21,000. We were expecting another high to be made with absolute certainty, or I was very sure of it. And we did in, end, in the end make a new high above that high. We stopped out all the early sort of shorters. We made our new high. Where was that new high made onto? It was on made onto the middle of our overall parallel channel. So an name. That was the reason why this high was put in. OK, and then we've obviously started to pull back here. And the level that we have currently pulled back to is onto our NPOC. 
okay, which is 20,575. It was actually touched, when you zoom in here very locally, to pretty much the exact dollar for that bounce, okay? And now I was going to explain why I took the short position on the day trading perspective, okay? Fairly simple. I obviously had my range high, range low. We done a swing failure pattern here of the high and the icing on the cake, which I always say, ladies and gentlemen, is the order flow. I'll just show you this because it was absolutely perfect. So EG, have your alert set high, high, high. Have your alert set at that high. See the alert, check the reaction. Visually, we can see the reaction here is a rejection, but checking the order flow, absolutely perfect. Lots and lots of millions of trapped longs into the high. There's your open interest increase. There's your trap longs with the positive delta on the swing failure pattern with what I can just refer to as massive, massive bearish divergences. This is a trade that us at Chart Champions would take every day of the week. Every single opportunity we're given on that, we have the alert and we're trading the reaction. The reaction is really simply visually appealing to us. Very visually, that's clearly a rejection. But we will always say, let's check the order flow. The order flow, absolutely perfect with the trap longs into the high. As soon as we're back down below, we've confirmed the swing failure pattern in the most perfect way possible. Okay, bearish divergences, trap longs. And obviously, we've now subsequently saw that move to the downside, which in my opinion is absolutely acceptable to have hit a take profit one. We've come down already through the middle of the channel into the range point of control, into the CC from low to high as well. Okay. So this is naturally a decent take profit one. And from here, what we can do is move that stop loss down and that short is winning whatever happens next, right? So if you were long from the NPOC, let's say you are awake and ready for this, long from the NPOC, you could now be in a long trade with your stop loss set and subsequently in a short trade with your stop loss set. And this range is either going to break to the downside and stop you out the long. Thus, you keep the short trade open and still running. Or we reverse, let's say, from the CC, push up. And the stop gets hit on the short trade and the long continues to run. So you're short, short from the high, long from the low, trading this range until it breaks. Okay. So that was the explanation that I wanted to give you locally of why I took that short. And I think if you study our content, if you truly have studied our content at Chart Champions, you've gone through the videos, you've gone through the courses, you really understand what we're doing here. This is a setup that I can say you would take every day of the week. This is our bread and butter at Chart Champions. And this is a very, very, very normal trade for us to be taking. Okay, it's a very, very standard trade setup for us. Um, so yeah, that's the walkthrough. And then I want to, of course, now explain what I'm looking for next. And this is next over the coming few hours to the next few days. Okay, really up, up to yeah the rest of this week. Here we are on a Monday. Um, before I go on to what I'm looking for next over the rest of the week, I'd just like to give one quick announcement here. And it's not so much of an announcement. It's more so of talking about what's going on because I, I truly find this very interesting. And... Uh, you, might, you may or may not know the, the, the large Bitcoin account, okay? This is obviously the main official Bitcoin 5, 5 million followers account. So I started to get interested when I started to see them tweeting out this about FTX. Uh, FTX are rumored to be on the brink of insolvency, e.g. very, very bad news for FTX and Sam, right? Um, and I move on to start to see, okay, they're now retweeting people are having really big issues with drawing what's happening here with FDX, you know, people can't withdraw their funds. There's rumors of insolvency. Um, now people are unable to even withdraw their funds. And then it all started to make sense when I saw this tweet. And this is from the Binance guy, right? The C CZ. Uh, he's liquidating all of their FTX, uh, just post exit money. He's basically referring to it as Luna. Okay, we don't, you know, we don't support people who lobby against others in the industry behind their backs. And the other week, I remember seeing other people inside the space. Everybody, you know, a lot of these type of uh, same sort of posts, all with a lot of fear. And it's like I was saying the other day to you all. It's like I was saying the other day. Um, obviously, I don't trade fundamentals. I don't get involved in any of this. I, I don't actually treat, even trade FTX, right? But I do think it's very important to be 
aware of where you're trading. I've always said I'm not fond of Binance. I've been impartial on FTX, to be honest with you. I'm very impartial. I don't love it. I don't like the user interface. I must admit, I don't like that user interface. But nevertheless, I'm, I'm impartial on it. Okay, if people want to use it, it's fine. But when you start to see these massive, um, you know, massive players in the game, such as CZ, these guys obviously got billions and billions and billions. They're selling all their FTX. You then see the official Binance, but a Bitcoin account warning people. People are unable to withdraw. There's a lot of things saying they're going insolvent. I think it's time to really pay attention um pay attention for two reasons one for your own security right if you've got funds on ftx i would maybe take some safety measures towards that again do your own research i'm not telling you to do anything here but you know non-financial advice do your own research i would personally take some caution of that maybe it's nothing and it's just going to blow over but nevertheless i think it's wise to take some caution right well, second of all, just recognize that this could end in a big opportunity, okay? It could end in a large opportunity. So there's a few reasons why I'm paying attention to it. But overall, this is why I am very much, you know, sticking with, with Bybit, okay? You know, all know my exchange, preferred exchange, <laughs> for a long time now has been Bybit, okay? They don't get involved with these games. They never go offline. They have no sort of bias in, in, in they're not even going to be speculating or commenting on it. So it's like you know, this is my personal exchange. This is where I like to trade. And, and then seeing these type of fights between Binance and FTX, it's just like, ugh, this, this is this is not something that I would want to see my exchange getting involved in because this is all like real shady behavior, right? And so I will make you aware of the upcoming event that we have with them. And that is that there is a new $30,000 deposit blast off. This is obviously beneficial for yourself as the user because the more you deposit and trade, the larger deposit bonus you can get up to a free $30,000. The way this works, of course, is with affiliates. Uh, that's, that means, for example, I'll just give a quick explanation of this. Let's say you pay uh, $1.00. Well, let's just say ten dollars for a tr for a trading fees, right? So, generally speaking, if you pay ten dollars for trading fees, a hundred percent of that goes to buy bit. Uh, with finding up via the Chart Champions affiliate link, you still pay ten dollar for your fee. That doesn't change, but instead of a hundred percent going to buy bit, we would take you know one dollar of that. Okay, so it, at the end user, it makes no difference to them. For us, we get a little kickback. The majority, of course, goes to but we get a bit of a kickback, but the end user, because we've affiliated with them and, and helped them, they obviously are going to get th a f free up to $30,000, e.g. yourself. So this is just a new event that we have planned, and it just so happened to coincide with all the bad news that's going on with FTX and Binance. Uh, this is a pretty good opportunity if you do want to, you know, protect yourself and, and you know, move around some funds, and you can obviously take advantage of that with the up to free $30,000 deposit bonus, which is the biggest bonus in the market and the biggest one that they've ever done. So yeah, if you want to take advantage of that, I will leave the links in the description, which is just going to be via the Chart Champions affiliate link. So yeah, that was just the announcement slash rumors and all this sort of drama that's going on right now with Binance and FTX and how, hey, we can help you with that if you want. And it's, um, you know, making you aware of a my preferred exchange but again do your own research at the end of the day but yeah this is the new deposit bonus that's going on with up to a free thirty thousand dollars and with that said back to the charts then so um yes yeah, i'll tell you what i'm looking for next obviously on the lower term time frame we still have this local range to be trading we can see the bounce occurring right now off the cc okay so this is where we're bouncing from back into that cc just like all the rejections up here was into the cc into the cc into the cc into the cc okay i can just really quickly draw this for you really quickly just so you can kind of see this uh, into the cc and then you go from that high down to the low into the cc and you go from that, that high down to the low into the cc so continuously see rejections and now down here obviously back into our fibonacci level as well um, if you want to learn about the CC Fibonacci level, this is obviously one that I made with my values. And if you want to learn about that, of course, we've got all the education over on our website, chartchampions.com. Um, but for me, yeah, we've got this local range to be trading. Okay. And then ways that I trade is level to level trading. So if we break our range low, there will be a few things I'll be looking at. Once again, so kind of similar to what I was looking up at the high when we were looking at the rejection up here. 
we would look for one or two things. Extreme weakness on the break where we would look for continued move to the downside or the swing failure pattern, right? Where we kind of take the lows and move back up. Okay, so swing failure pattern failed auction. That's what we'd be looking at here. If we got a swing failure pattern failed auction, it's another long setup. If we do a straight move down and real big, real big weakness, we can look to our, down towards our next level. 20,140 with a potential support coming in there around 20,340. Okay, it's been the next two levels. Alternatively, this range holds the lows. We move back up to the highs. And again, we have the same scenario up here on the lower term time frame. Swing failure pattern or failed auction for the short. If that doesn't occur, then actually we can look for a fairly large move back up here. Okay, when we start to contemplate where there's a lot of the volume, it's still all up or towards these highs around that daily. So this local break is, of course, going to be very important. Okay, we can see there are going to be sub resistances. We can still take that last high to low to see this resistance around 21,000, just above $21,000. Okay. Um, but for me, this is a level to level environment right now. OK, so we got our failed auction of the highs with our massively big bearish divergences up here. OK, so we had really big bearish divergences. OK, you can see for yourself like this is bearish divergences. And then even down here before the drop, I mean, it's, just look at this. This is lower, 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 lower highs, lower highs. This is bearish divergences. And then you got a really big drop to the downside. You even got a retest. By the way, this was the channel. That I was on about. So this was the channel. Let me just hide these other things for you a second. This was the channel that we're obviously we're looking at, and that channel even broke to the downside, got the retest, and then another subsequent move down. So the technicals for me are very well respected. Um, and then yeah, really, this is the way that I'm trading it right now. Obviously, I took the short position after this based off of the order flow. More bearish divergences, trap longs into the high. Um, but of course, I've hit a take profit off of this, which is really nicely set actually the current low and then really simply i'm going to wait for the break of this range here okay if we break the range high i'm going to look back up to that anchored vwap to be honest with you okay and validation would be coming back into the range and the range low swing fire pattern failed auction if we don't get that i'll look down to the two levels that i just explained to you okay ladies and gentlemen this truly is how a professional comes into this market analyzes the market does their technical analysis and understands the probabilities at the end of the day there's no guarantee in trading this market can move up down or sideways thus we have to be prepared where we want to long and where we want to short and where really, really simply where we want to remain patient not in a trade okay there's always three options long short or no trade and only via using our technical analysis and understanding the probabilities of this market, we can make informed decisions to know when to long, when to short, or when not to take a trade. Okay, I've shown you what I've been looking at over the past few days. I've explained and called this price action. This current low was our daily NPOC, which I can just show you here really quickly for you, just so you can also have an understanding. Okay, so that was that was the that was from a few days ago, three days ago. We're aware of that level. That level was hit three days later to the dollar for a bounce. You get the swing fire pattern with the perfect order flow. And oh, really simply, this is a trader's dream right now, especially for the lower term time frame traders, right? We have no overall biases. It doesn't matter of us if the bottom's in, if the high's in. All we care about is the next levels. All we care about is the next trade. I don't care if the bottom's in for Bitcoin. I don't care if the top is in for Bitcoin. All I care about is the next level. Where's the next trade I can take? Where's the next amount of money that I can extract from this market? So with all the drama going on, <laughs> left, right, and center, load of FUD, load of fear, <laughs> I'm, I'm not caring about this. All I care about is my trades, my analysis, and my execution. Of course, if you want to learn more from us, you can get that over at chartchampions.com. And that includes the theory, it includes the education, and it does include our insights in the time. Tomorrow, you've obviously got Igor's live stream. So if you want to check out Igor's live trading stream, then you can watch him live trading tomorrow on stream. Again, if you want to take advantage of this deposit bonus, it does mean creating a brand new Bybit account. So you do have to have a brand new Bybit account to take advantage of this. It is for first deposit new users only. But if you are in interested in that, I will leave the link down below in the description. It's basically this link here. I'll leave that down below where you can join uh, basically via the Chart Champions team and take advantage of this up to $30,000. Obviously, the more you deposit, the more you can take advantage. But um, yeah, it starts at you know, $50, $50. So for, for everybody can take advantage of that, really. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. 
And um, yeah, I'll catch you in the next video that I make. I hope that you've enjoyed. I'll catch you soon, everybody. And yeah, CC Paul, send their regards. Thank you ever so much. I love you. I love you. I hope it's been helpful and I'll see you soon. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. And that's me signing out. Goodbye. Oh, actually, no, I'll end with the legal trade disclaimer, of course. And this is just that this video has no financial advice. It's just entertainment, educational video only. All trades on a paper demo trade account. Cheers. Thank you. Goodbye.